this is a request for a client repaint. This is not a complex pattern, but it needs to be the right colors. It absolutely has to be the right colors. But for something like this, when you have tournament anglers that are very specific on their, on their pattern, you want to make sure you get it right. So, that being said, let's make something cool today. For the first part of this, fairly simple. We're going to bring our photo over. We're going to keep that up on screen. I'm going to have this fairly nearby because I want to be able to look at that. I want you guys to be able to get a good picture of this, so I'm going to post this up in the corner, probably this corner of your screen, so that you guys can see it throughout the journey on these baits. This is a pattern where we're going to work from light to dark, and it's not going to take that long, but again, the key here is getting the colors right and making sure that it's exactly how this bait looks. It can be tricky, but it shouldn't be for this bait because it looks like they've used some pretty basic colors. This would even make a good video for using primary colors with the exception of, and you could probably even pull that off with primary colors, this fluorescent orange. You could actually mix that with red and yellow, but um, this is a fluorescent. So for this one, we're definitely going to get that right for the customer. So as far as the beginning color, this yellow, we're not painting a Rembrandt, so this can be one of those cheap brushes, as long as it's a flat, because you would, what you want to do is you want to pull that in order to show what it's going to look like. You want to spread the paint out. And this is just a pretty basic Createx bright yellow. I think the color is 5114, but I'll pull this back on screen here in just a second. Don't ask me why I've memorized numbers on the... Okay, so I still remember like the very first address where I grew up. It's 1350 Locust Avenue in Bel Air, Maryland, 21014. Somebody's trying to talk to me, but we're talking to you guys. So you guys are important right now, not them. Not that you're, whoever you are, you are important, but we're doing this. This looks pretty good. Yes, it is a 5114 bright uh, Createx transparent yellow. Second color, I don't think it's a leaf green. I really think that it's going to be a, uh, we're going to put the leaf green out, just a drop of it, but I'm pretty sure that the color is closer to the uh, transparent tropical green. So shake that a little bit. It is a bit of a darker green. We're going to put them both out though. The light may or may not pick up how close they are. I use this to clean my watercolor brush, but this will work for this too. Just want to get the majority of that off. I'm going to pull this down. I think that this leaf green has got a little bit too much yellow in it. That's where my thought pattern is here, thought process. Yeah, it's too yellow. Need that darker green. It's not a moss green. That's a little bit too dark. This one though, this is the tropical green. I wonder if we mix that with one drop of moss green, how that would mix. Probably going to mix too dark and too olive. Yep, that's too dark. So we're going to go with this straight tropical green, our transparent bright yellow, an opaque detail jet black, wicked jet black, and bright red on the eyes. Very simple. Primary colors. You can do that pattern with your primary colors. If you're just starting out, this would be an ideal match and practice for you guys. So, to my beginners, this video speaks directly to you, although, for those of you that are painting for tournament anglers, or you're just starting to paint for tournament anglers, 
this is good for you guys as well. He sent us four bandits total. This is the one, two, and 300 series. I have a single 300, a single 100, and two 200 series. He sent me two black ones and two white ones. Um, pretty easy colors to prime and paint over. We could have tricked this out a little bit more and put some scaling mesh on here, but we're not going to do that. That's not the customer's request. He just wanted the, the colors matched. So that's exactly what we're given. He also has ordered a European Hornet, but there's a whole video on that, so I'm not going to revisit that on this particular spray session. We're going to go from light to dark. Make sure I've got you guys in frame, and I do. So firing on all cylinders. And I'm going to load enough yellow in the chamber to do all four. And we're going to bring the pressure down just a little bit. I'm going to run the base, base colors here and yellow is my base color on this, right around 15. So, we're just going to start up the sides. There we go. Don't want to get too far up the sides because we got to lay that green in. And I'm kind of layering as I go here, so I'm going back over what I've already laid down a couple of times. But at low pressure, you're okay with doing that because you're not going to blow paint all over the bait. So I'm running the yellow just above this little median line here, the definer, but not too much further than that. Went ahead and left my yellow in the chamber because we're going to blend this green into it. Now with the green, I'm not going to come at a 90 degree angle because what that's going to do is that's going to put little globs of paint into the yellow. So I'm going to hit this, the next shade, this green is going at an angle and we're going to go up. And then we're going to have to come back and hit it with yellow again. And this green can go all the way up and over. There's no problem with doing that because black is going to be on the top. So I need to load a little bit more green into the chamber here. Remember to angle up. And we're still working right around 15 on pressure. Load it for the other two. angle that. Don't hit it at a 90 degree angle because you'll get a lot more overspray. Load just a little bit more in the chamber. Less is more. It's okay to run out. Run this on top. Just going to blend up the sides a little bit more. There we go. Now we're on to the next step. The next step being black on the top. We don't need to kill it. So we're just going to lightly spray. You want to make sure it's even. I'm going to bring my pressure down to about 15. A 
Nice even strokes across the top. Just kind of angle it down, fade that in, and then we're going to come back and blend it with a little bit of green. Now we're cooking with fire. And again, it's, it's not the complexity of this pattern, but it's the fact that we want to match the colors the way our customers want it to be. Get that black all the way down to the tape. Just real light strokes across the top, angle it down. Come back and get that nose. Make sure all of them that you're doing are matched up. You don't want any inconsistencies. You want all of them to look as identical as possible. Now green can be a bit of a tricky color, so we want to be careful and make sure that this is still wet or tacky, because we're going to go back just with a little bit of green and get that blend. And it looks really good now. But we just want to come back and make it look as even as we can. There we go. That's the green we're looking for, folks. Now we're going to grab a Q-tip. And I had just the tail end of some bright transparent red, but it doesn't matter. It's not reduced. Transparent will be just fine. I got a quick heat set on these four. And a couple things left to do, eyes being one of them, and then we're going to do a little bit of fluorescent orange on the throat of this bait. But, you know, it's even... Go ahead and do this. Do it this way. Do it the right way, Jen. We're going to pull this completely off of the helping hands because it's easier, for, at least for me, to be able to pinpoint where I'm going to put this And you want the eyes to be even. And luckily on the bandits, because um, the eyes are not 3D and eye socketed, you get a pretty good bullseye to put this down on. The biggest thing is just to make sure that both eyes are about the same size. So just be real gentle with your Q-tip and you should have a pretty easy time getting that on. Then once your eyes are on, I go ahead and tilt this back just so that the eyes, like if, if gravity takes hold and this paint is wet, they'll have a tendency to drip down. But if you leave it just like that, they should be just fine. So that's a little helpful tip for putting on eyes. And because they have a little bump here, that kind of helps grip the paint. One more to go. And speaking of one more to go, it's always easier if you're doing a run for a customer of more than, say, two baits, or even more than one, if you do it all at the same time you have the same pattern because that way you know that your colors are going to be consistent. If you do half of these and then come back and try and match the colors on the other half, sometimes it doesn't always work out as planned. Don't need a whole lot. You just want it on the throat. And voila! We have matched the colors for a customer. 
Only other thing that we want to do is once these uh, drops of red for the eyes are completely dry, we're going to add a little tiny black pupil in the middle of them and we're going to use an artist detail brush to do that. So stick around, we're almost done. We need to put on a little bit of black for the pupil. These have dried enough to where I'm confident I can get it on. Now you can, you can use a Q-tip here, but if you make a mistake, it's going to blot the entire portion of red. So I'm going to use an artist brush. I'm not even going to use a mixing cup. I'm just going to pour a little bit of this jet black out on this scrap piece of paper here. Just really only need one drop. You don't need to go crazy on it. We'll leave that there just so that you guys can see what we did. Actually, that's the transparent red. So primary colors matching the request for the customer, getting the colors right by using scrap paper. And the one thing, the kind of a caveat here is that you may get uh, a photo from a customer that isn't 100% accurate. So the best advice that I can give you in that instance is, because all cameras are a little bit different, um, laptops vary in tonal qualities depending on how you have it set up. My iPhone that I use all the time for just quick pictures, I have True Tone on it, which gives, it's supposed to give 100% natural representation of what the original photograph was. You always hope that that's what happens, but it may not be. So if you want to be 100% certain, if you can find the original bait, go find it. But you can also look at a bunch of different pictures online when you type in different color patterns or you type in uh, green and black bandit 100s and you'll get a bunch of stuff that comes up. So there's a lot of, a lot of times where you can find what the bait looks like. Let's say the one the customer gave you a picture of is all chewed up and the color's half knocked off the bait. So just try and do some research and get the colors as close as, as humanly possible. And like I said, the best thing to do is just practice on a little piece of scrap paper and get your colors and your tones. These are fairly easy because these are primary colors. Now, I, I'll say that and then say this. Green is not a primary color. Green is a combination of yellow and blue, two primary colors. But it's with every primary color set that they make. So if all you have are primaries, then you can certainly recreate something like this with that. Um, you can also blend and mix. So we're just going to use the end of this paintbrush. Do a little pupil there. And you just, you don't need to knock it out of the park here. You just barely want to tip the brush onto that lure. And there you go. You got pupils. And I do like a, a tip of a paintbrush more than I do because it's it's loads paint well. Um, some people use uh, toothpicks, which is fine, but toothpicks are pretty unforgiving and they will uh, they won't hold paint like a paintbrush will. So and then I'm using you can see I'm using my pinky to steady myself here. Make sure I get this in the middle of the eye. And bandits are pretty good because they give you that um, they give you that target, a little bullseye on them, because they're raised up. And now we've got pupils on these, and we are headed to the races, folks. I'm not going to show you the clear coat on this one, just because we've done so much with clear coat recently. I'm going to get you guys out of this video a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. And to be honest, folks, it's because I want to go, I've got prime rib and uh, I want to go grill that. I'm sorry, it's not prime rib. I'm lying to you. It's ribeye. So I've got a couple of juicy ribeyes that I want to throw on the grill here. So that is it, folks. We're going to show you a picture at the end of this video of these clear coated and drying like we normally do. And if you guys have any questions or comments or you need some advice, leave me a comment in the description below. Um, all the stuff that I use here, all of the paints that I use, they're all linked in the description below as well. 
and I hope you guys have learned a little bit of something I hope that I was able to teach you a few things today whether you're new or you've been at it for a while uh, I do love to teach and uh, the only way that I can continue to do that is through all of you guys so I appreciate it you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you soon happy casting from Jekyll Bates